You're good to go when you're ready. Alhamdulillah. In alhamdulillah, na'maduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'afiruhu. Wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori wa fuqsina wa min sayyat ahmalina. Min yahdihi allahu falamu dillala wa man yudlil falahari allah. Wa shaharu wa la ilaha ila allahu wa ahdahu la shubayka allah. وشهروا أن محمد أبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الحق وتقاته ولا تموتون إلا وأنتم مسلمون الحمد لله we praise Allah we seek His aid His forgiveness we seek refuge in Allah from the evil of ourselves and from the harm of all wrongdoing whosoever Allah guides and we can lead astray whosoever He leads astray and we can guide and I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship except Allah who is one that in thought is not bear with it. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a sinner. Yes. Or you believe, fear Allah, that you should be feared and do not die except for the Muslim. So I remind myself and remind all of you to always be conscious of Allah, always have the taqwa. The taqwa of Allah is It's the most important thing in our minds because again, it establishes that relationship that we're supposed to have with Allah on God. Be close to Allah, to be conscious of Allah, to be mindful of His commandments and staying away from His prohibitions. This is key. And also, we, you know, and also keep in mind that again, one's rank, one's status in the sight of Allah is based upon that. In the Akramakum, in the Allahi Atqakum. The most honorable in the sight of Allah is the one that has taqwa, the one that fears Allah, the one that is pious and righteous. And that's what it's all about. And also, you know, keeping in mind the times that we're in now, the tests, the trials, you know. You know, one of the things that Allah reminds us of in the Quran is that, you know, that if you have taqwa, if you have the real fear of Allah SWT, that you're supposed to, you know, then Allah SWT will make a way for you. <laughs> Allah make things easy, but Allah make a way for you, you see. And so we don't have to have the kind of worry and the anxiety that a lot of other people have. So having said that, inshallah, I want today talk about, again, two things primarily. The one is patience, having patience during times of trial and during times of testing, and having hope and being optimistic, you know, looking for a better outcome. That's, you know, that's what's important, you see. That's what's supposed to motivate us to know that Allah SWT will give us ease. You know, after every difficult day of relief, you know, as we mentioned before, but in the ma'an usri yusra, in the ma'an usri yusra, learn of every difficulty there is. We need very, every difficulty is relief. So having said that again, you know, um, Allah SWT says in the Quran, وَلِنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوءِ وَالنَّقْصِ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفُسِ وَالْتَمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرْ صَابِرِينَ الذين إذا أصابتهم مصيبة قالوا إن لله وإنا إليه راجعون أولئك عليهم صلوات من ربهم ورحمة وأولئك هم المتدون. And Allah also says وادعوه خوفا وتماء إن رحمة الله قريب. And so the translation of these verses in Surah Baqarah, verse 155 to 157. And certainly we shall test you with something of fear, hunger, loss of wealth, lies, and the fruits of the fruits, but give glad tidings to the sovereign, those who are patient. So glad tidings are out there. We be patient, we accept this. You know, we accept the trials, the calamities, whatever they are. Patient, you know, and and who, when afflicted with calamity, whatever it is, they say, truly to Allah we belong, and truly to Him we shall return. A lot of times we say that inna lillahi wa inna lillahi rajiun. We say that when someone dies, right? But any calamity, you say that. Any any calamity, you can say that inna lillahi wa inna lillahi rajiun. That's what Allah is saying to us. Right, so we have to make use of this. 
<laughs> do how that you know well. <laughs> Every time someone passed away, you say so. You can say it in any calamity, any hardship, you know, because that reminds you, you know, of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that you're collect connected to Allah, that you belong to Allah, and everything is in the hands and the power of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Right? And then Allah goes on to say, "They are those who." Who, on whom are the salawat, or the or those who are blessed and those who have been forgiven by, from the Lord, and they receive his mercy and his guidance. You see? So those who are patient, you know, and those who are patient when calamities come, you know, and, and they take this positive attitude, this positive attitude, you know, in the nidayun, in the in the lay rajun, when they're the ones, you know, again, you know, that Allah wa ta'ala has blessed, right, blessed, you see? Okay? And they're the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, forgives, and they're the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shines his mercy upon and gives them guidance. And alhamdulillah, we have guidance. Because again, we have the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and have the way of the Prophet. And all we have to do, to do is, is, to, is to be connected with the book. Be connected with the book and be connected with the Sunnah. You see what I'm saying? And that helps you guide through them. You, 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 you look at, you know, uh, what others uh, uh, before you have went through, you see? Like Allah says, you know, or well, think you that you will enter paradise without such trials as came to those before you? They were afflicted with severe poverty and ailments and were so shaken. Or zulzi. <laughs> or zulzi. They were, you know, zulzi, you know, it was like an earthquake. They were so shaken that even the messenger of Allah, Sallallahu and those who were with him said, when will come the help of Allah? Verily, the help of Allah one dollar is me. You see? So those who came before you, yes, they were tried too. So do we think we're going to get a lot of paradise? Whether it's the coronavirus or whether it's an earthquake or whether it's a storm, you know, it doesn't matter. Your house burns back, doesn't it? All of these calamities, when they come, they come. It's a test on your patience. You see? You know? Allah wants to feel you out. Allah wants to know what you made of. You see? You know, all this talk about, you know, all this posturing sometimes that we have about, you know, how much iman we think we have, right? How much Muslim we are, and how much better we are, you know, uh, over another brother or another soldier. Oh, look at them guys. They, 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 and we ain't looking at ourselves. So Allah tests us. See where you at. See? Allah wants to us, you know, I ask Allah wants to and He will test and He will try your method. You know, people may think you're a strong believer, but like a calamity coming, you may, you may cower. You, you may fall low, so you never know. That's why you have to be humble during these times. And look at these things and reflect. This is what Allah wants want me to learn. You see? And so, alhamdulillah, so even the messenger of Allah, you know, you know, when time got rough, when time, even he was shaking. Okay? So it happens. All right? And Allah wants Allah, like, you know, tells us, also, that when these things come, and, and call upon Allah with fear and hope. And call upon Allah with fear and hope. Surely Allah's mercy is near to those who are, who are doers of good. So that's where the hope comes in. So right now, people are fearful. People are fearful. We, we better not be in fear. We should not be in fear. No, because we got Allah on top. We got to keep that in mind. And if you got a strong connection with Allah, then you know these things. If you have chakra, you're building your chakra. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, alhamdulillah, Allah will get us through this here. We have enough uh, 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 guidance in the book of Allah to get us through. So we ain't supposed to be sad. You know? We supposed to be, ah, pound up. You know? And we can feel the pain like everybody else. We can be shaking a bit, you see what I'm saying? But we still got to be positive and look beyond the tests. But there are going to be more tests. There are going to be more tests. Think about it. You know, the hadith say that when the Prophet spoke about the latter days and the signs of the last days, when, 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 when the trial, you know, the trial would be so, the test would be so heavy, you see, it'll come like waves. He said, you know, he said, you know, when, when the fitna comes and the test comes, you know, you know, one will say, ah, oh, we're doomed. So we're looking at coronavirus, oh, we're doomed. Oh, man. You see what I'm saying? The Prophet said, the one after that would be worse. They will keep coming like that. And each time they come, they'll be worse. Okay? All right? So keep those things in mind, you know? Be strong. Be humble, but be strong, you know? Lean on Allah. Rely upon Allah. Call on Allah. Be humble before Allah. Be thankful to Allah. That's how we got to be. See? 
being positive, looking forward, you know, to the ease when Allah brings it. When, and when he brings it, you see, and don't be so hasty sometimes, you, you know, you, you, you know, we, we make dua with oh Allah, oh Allah, oh Allah, you see, asking Allah, calling on Allah to give us or, 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 or to lift, but Allah lift in his own time when he wants to, you know. Allah wants to put us through a little bit more. <laughs> and it's okay. It's okay. You learn after a while. He says, hey, you know, Allah wants to be patient. Allah wants to be grateful. It's like the Prophet said, you know, you know, everything that happens to a believer is good for him. Everything. Only for the believer. It's only for the believer because he has Iman, he has faith in Allah. He knows Allah controls all things. So everything that comes to him, oh, subhanAllah. <laughs> you see? The Prophet said, when good comes, when good happens to him, you know, everything is good. Alhamdulillah. So he's thankful, he's thankful, he's grateful. He said, Alhamdulillah, when good happens to him. And you should be. Because Allah does not like those who are ungrateful. You see, but for the believer, when good, a believer, he's always grateful when something good. And when something bad or calamity or adversity or difficulty hits him, you see, be patient. And that's good for him, see? So it's a win-win situation, either way you look at it. That's how I look at it. <laughs> you say, well, I'm trying to. <laughs> so, so I'm trying to walk through it, too, just like everybody else, like the prophet. <laughs> so, brothers uh, and sisters, love. Yes, these are trying times. And, okay, and, and we are uh, a week away from Ramadan. Wow. I don't know. A week away from Ramadan. You see? And so the Ramadan is going to be good. It's going to be good. Because all Ramadans are good. I'll come back to that in a minute. So, uh, um, but I just want to highlight again a few, few things. Like, I was thinking, you know, the struggle. You know, I, I was thinking about the trials and, and, the, and the tribulations and the, and the hardships that we are going through that mankind is experiencing, okay? The fear, you know, that the ayah speaks about, you know? You know, the, the, the hunger. You see all of that. You see lines all over the place. People, you know, on those, those feeding lines that never, you know, uh, had to ask anybody for anything. You know, the rich, you know, the, the wealthy, the upper middle class. Now, a lot of them. <laughs> I never dreamed that I'd be on a line, you know, asking for food. You people with a good job, and they got no job now. I mean, you check the news out, you follow the news, you know what the, 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 the statistics say, you know. 20 something, 22, 23, 24 million people out of jobs. So people are like, whoa. You know, so people are hungry. I was speaking to a brother in Texas yesterday on the phone. He told me, yeah, he said, he got a little thing out. He's trying to get donations to help feed the people out there in Texas. I said, okay, we're trying to get something to you. So it's real. He said, hey, man, you go out and watch the line, you look at the line, you look at the people. So people are suffering. You see, that's what the eye talking about. Every, you know, the whole eye in itself, the whole verse about, you know, the fear, you know, the hunger, you know, you see it manifest all over the place. You know, people losing their wealth or losing their job, you know. People dying, you know, the numbers, I don't know. But it's all the test. It's all the test. It's okay. All right? And we take it in stride, you know. You know, we take it with patience and we still look hopeful. Because we know Allah wants Allah is watching over everything. And so I want to close, you know, uh, we just to remind us again uh, the whole idea of struggle. Life is a struggle. Allah, Allah says, you know, that he has created man into toil and struggle. <laughs> you know, even though we mentioned earlier that you think you were into paradise without being tested, I don't know. But Allah also said that he has created you. All men, he created men. We have created, verily we have created man to toil and struggle. This life is toil, struggle. This life is full of trials and tribulations. You know, difficult. There's, there's good times and there's bad times. It's okay. You see? Uh, and it's going to go like that until, until the end of time. There will be good times and there will be bad times for everybody. You see, but they'll, they, but they, one day there'll come a time where it's going to be all bad and it's going to stay that way. And it's going to be all good and it's going to stay that way. That's in the hereafter. You see, so in the hereafter, if you get gender, you'll never suffer. No, you'll never suffer again. It's all over. You see, there's no good and bad. You see, but for the disbelievers, 
And those who reject the law of my God is all bad, all pain. They think they're going to do something now, but we think we're going to do something now. Boy, oh boy. You know, and the hell, you know, you know, if you end up in hell, the pain that you suffer here, nothing. The discomfort, the difficulty that you go through here is nothing compared in comparison to the eternal, you know, torment and pain that you're gonna go through next. So, brothers and sisters, come about. We just have to go through what we got to go through. <laughs> go through what we got to go through. Having patience, because the law's testing our patience. See? See what we made of. And being hopeful and calling out to Allah to give us relief because he had made that promise. And seeking his forgiveness. Alhamdulillah. That's what Allah wants, Allah wants us to do. You know? So I was reflecting. We look at struggle, right? And hardships. I was thinking. Any kind of hardship, any kind of difficulty in life. You know, the fact, you know, the, the mere fact that Allah wants that he's created man to struggle from life, to struggle. Difficulty. I'm talking about the prophets of Allah. Allah wants to reveal their stories in the God, and every story you read was rough. It was rough. It was a struggle. You know, all of them. You know, some more than others. And Allah wants to, you know, go into the details about, you know, in certain, in some of them more so than others. You know, the story of Ayub. You know, the hardship that he went through. You know, the suffering, the disease, the loss of his wealth, the loss of his family, and all those things. But he was patient. He was patient. And the Lord wants Allah, Allah sent him relief after some time. You see what I'm saying? Okay? But he went to what he had gone through. Could you go through that? And the prophets of Salaam said that the envy of the prophets of Allah are tested more than anybody. <laughs> see? They're tested more than anybody. Okay? Because they have the strongest iman. You see? All right? And so we look at the prophet Yusuf, alayhi salam. You know, what he went through? His father, Ayub, being separate from his father. You know, I mean, uh, 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 I'm sorry, uh, Ayub being separate from his son. You know, 30 years, 40 years, separated. You know, the pain of that. You know, and then finally he got to see him near the end of his life. You know, you know we know that story. And, and what Yusuf went through, you know, the jealousy of his brother being thrown in the well and the captivity, you know what I'm saying, you know, and so, you know, he was sold into captivity and he captivity and he ended up going to prison and on and on and on. Wow. You know, they went through it, man. It, was, it wasn't easy. You know? The persecution, the suffering that all of them suffered from. You know, ask yourself, could I have went through that? I couldn't have gotten me how to suffer. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salam ala khair al-mursaleen Muhammad Nabi'un wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa ba'an Subhanallah As I mentioned Ayub, the prophet Ayub and Yusuf and their struggle they were always positive though they were always looking to the future you know, the prophet Ayub they told his sons you know what I'm saying, you know that he had hope in the law. And that we should never despair with the law's mercy. And we should never lose hope. You see? So pain and suffering and struggling and the ups and downs of life, the tests, the trials. It's okay. <laughs> you know, be hopeful. Be positive. You know, be on the side of your Lord a long time. You're going to be all right. If you ain't on the side of Allah, you ain't going to be all right. You see? And so again, in closing, we look at the example of our beloved prophets. <laughs> it makes you want to cry. Brothers and sisters. It makes you want to cry. 23 years of his prophetic Life. <sighs> a little ease in between. <laughs> a little ease in between. You remember when he got the revelation? All his life, he was, it was good for him. I mean, he went through the ups and downs of life, but nothing severe, nothing major. And so he grew up in a society where everybody loved him, and oh, 
El Amin, Al Sadiq, you know, they loved him, you know, and they respected him. Yes. He went to him. You see, but as soon as he gets the revelation, he goes, you know, Khadija takes him to her, her cousin, Waraka bin Nawfu, you know, and he explained to him what he experienced in the cave. And Waraka, you know, he was an old man, he was blind, he was a Christian, he knew the book, he knew the scripture, you know. And he said, Oh man, you were prophet of God. You're a prophet of Allah. He said, oh, man, I wish I were young again so that I can aid you when your people will run you out. <laughs> the prophet of Islam didn't understand that because he did the lack of ease somewhat. You see what I'm saying? In the society. You see? But very soon he learned. That's why Allah revealed all those stories in the Quran about the previous prophets. Give him a little, give him, give him some strength. Hey, you ain't going to go through, you're not, gonna, you're not going through anything different than they went through. They were persecuted. You see? So when you look at the 23 years of the prophet's life, you see, a, you see nothing but hardship. I think, my goodness, 23 years. You see? He lost both his parents, you know, well, well that's, that's, you know, that was enough. I mean, he, he dealt with that even before he got, you know, the, you know, uh, uh, before prophethood was, was given to him, you see what I'm saying? He went through that as a young man, you know, a, a young man. He didn't have a mother or father. You know, they, they passed away, so he was an orphan. He was an orphan, you see? All right, but let's, 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 let's fast forward when he became a prophet, subhanAllah, and the persecution and things he went through, subhanAllah. Think about it. And I, and I was thinking about it the other day, and I said, wow, the hardship and the difficulty that Allah put the prophet through. Allah, Allah loved the prophet, so well. The prophet Muhammad was Allah Khalil, just like Ibrahim, Islam. You see, so a lot, but he had to go through what he go, what he had, had to go through. You see, Subhanallah. So when you look at all of the things he went, through, the persecution he went through when he came out to preach, you know what I'm saying? And the opposition, you know, throwing dung on his back and all of that, giving him a hard time, persecuting his his follower, you know, the early Muslim, the, the assassination attempts, you know, you know, that led to him making the hijra. Think about that, you know, you know, he was called to a meeting. You know what I'm saying? And the plot was, you know what I'm saying? The, 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 the Jews were plotting as soon as he get there, and he was told to stand at a particular spot and wait, and they would come and he would, you know, work out whatever they were supposed to be working out. You see? And they and their plan was to drop a boulder on his head, man, to assassinate him. You see? But Allah said, Jabril, so he was able to escape that. You see what I'm saying? But again, that's just one attempt, you see? You know, so the hardships, you know, subhanAllah, the prophet loses six of his children. Six of his children died before before him. Do y'all know what that's like to lose a child? And I've lost four. Three sons and a stepson. <laughs> y'all know what that's like. I don't know. You know, just a little lose one child, that's heavy on a person, man. And any any anybody would tell you that. That ain't easy. You see? But a lot, you know, the problem with Muhammad says he lost six. His only surviving child was five and the Allah be pleased with her. She died six months later. After he died. So you lived through that. You think that wasn't hard, and you think about what you're going through. Have you lost any children? Then you just started. It's part of love. Okay? So something to reflect upon. Wow, how did the deal with that? That's the example for us, though. He didn't lose it. He didn't lose hope because he, his eyes were on the prize. He was still focused on the love of God. And that's how we have to be, you see? So the changes and the difficulties and the trials, and whether it's the, the loss of life, like the prophet experienced it, huh? the stoning in Taif, those the Taif, stoning, stoning, blood was all in his shoes. But he endured it, man. It was hard. Later on, I used to be a lot of people. What was the hardest, the hardest moment in your mission? You know? Oh, uh, nah. He said, it was Taif. It was Taif, you see? But they stoned him, man. It's hard. When we go out and get down, do we get stoned? Go out, the only one get stoned, maybe some of them get put in prison, but hey, you know, they got to endure it, they got to deal with it. See, that is the reality. But again, struggle, you look at the problem like it, there's no comparison with nobody. You know, the boycott, remember they put in the boycott in the early Mexican phase? Three years, no food, they were eating leaves and, 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 and leather, I mean, from, uh, leather skin from animals. Hey, you know, the, the, the people used to come complain to the prophet, hey, 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 hey. Had strings or ropes tied around his stomach because they were hungry. The prophet lifted up his shirt and he had two. Oh, no. But that was a hard time. <laughs> and they were isolated too. Like, like some of us are isolated today, right? And we still eating good. <laughs> we can go out and get on a lager, we don't like some food, but some of we ain't got to that point yet. Okay? May Allah protect us and guide us through. You know what I'm saying? 
We still eating good. We still go to the supermarket and buy some soup, buy some sandwich, buy some meat, buy some whatever. You know, I don't know. Okay. But for three years, they had no food. People used to sneak food into them. They thought they were being persecuted. But that was hard. It was so hard and so difficult. And, you know, as soon as they came out of that boycott, as soon as they came out of that boycott, his wife died, Khadija. Because she was sick from it. Abu Talib died. It was hard on the prophet. Oh, man. Hard on him. Okay? So, again, we look at the example of the struggle, you know? And, uh, and we go on and we go on and on and on, you know? And these are some of the things that took place in Mecca. Then, then, then after he goes to uh, Medina, I don't know. He could, it continued. It didn't stop. He had to fight his brother, you know what I'm saying? The battle of brother, the battle of Uhud, the battle of Azab. He didn't get a moment. He didn't get a moment of relief. How much relief could he have had? And then, and then, and then you, know, the, you know, the they kept on coming. You know, the battle of, you know, Tabu. Oh, God. Oh, God. The battle of Kaiba, another attempt on his life. You know? The Jewish woman, she wanted to test his prophet, his, test his prophet, or test whether he really a prophet or a liar. He said, so after the captain of Kaiba, the prophet was sitting down, you know, and, and with the brothers, and you know, and they and they and they and they and they brought some food for him. But the plot was to kill him. And he ate some of the food and then, you know, and he 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 tasted the poison and he said, ah, oh, it's poison. And he threw it away. Yeah. The prophet threw it away. But the effect of that poison, you know, stayed with him until the end of his life. Because at the end of his life, he said, I, still, I can feel the, the effect of the, of the poison. And that's why some of the scholars say that the prophet died a shaheed. You see? Because the effect of the poison, he, he, it continued to have an effect on his life even after that. You see? So again, this is the, some, of the, some of the tests, you know, and they went on. So, so, you, so you look at that period of time, 23 years, subhanAllah, it was a lot. So brothers and sisters, in closing, you know, again, uh, the difficulties, the trials, life, no matter on what level they're on, Allah will send the ease. Okay? We should always be hopeful. So again, going back to what I said earlier, again, patience, patience, and being hopeful for the good days that will come. Whenever they come, it's okay. Always look forward. Always be forward looking. Alhamdulillah, it's going, it's going to change. Okay? Alhamdulillah. And remember Allah Ta'ala again says, In the Akibat al In the Akibat al At the end, the best end of those who have taqwa. So be positive. Be optimistic. Go ahead and endure. Look at those who are going through worse struggle, worse, worse of, of, of hard times than yourself. Don't just focus on you. Look at others and what other people are going through. I mean, the people are going through it. Subhanallah. So be grateful to Allah one time, but have that hope, you see, and, and give others that hope that you need. You know, don't go around people with a with a sad sack kind of you know mindset. You know, you know, be you know, alhamdulillah. You know, feel the pain, but I mean, you know, feel the stress and all of that. But at the same time, you know, be hopeful and give others hope. That's how we have to be. You see, let people get strength off of your strength. Right now, we need strong people in their faith. But you got to work on that. So Ramadan is coming, come to the law. So it's going to be a good Ramadan because, again, Ramadan, Ramadan, Ramadan is the last month. <laughs> you see, so the virtues of Ramadan, the beauty of Ramadan, the goodness of Ramadan, the mercy of Ramadan, the forgiveness of sins, and all those things are still there. It's just that we can't come to the mosque and socialize. We can't come to the mosque and make it our way, okay? We used to read the Quran. You know what I'm saying? You still got to purify your heart and, and, and make the change and your adjustment seeking a lot more again. You still got to fast. You know, Shaitan's still gonna be locked up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Paradise still gonna be open. You see, so you have to you ain't got to go no oh, I'm in isolation. No, that's okay. It's just different. This is different. So we have a instead of having the last 10 days in intercom, we have 30 days in intercom, right? Think about it in that life. So may Allah my dollar help us all. Inshallah. 
Allah forgive the Ummah and accept our repentance. Allah, we ask that you protect the Ummah and remove the calamity that are upon us. Allah, we ask that you send down a cure for this coronavirus. Allah, we ask that you cure the Ummah from the diseases in our hearts. Allah, we ask that you restore the Ummah the Haramain, Mecca and Medina, so that we can go and worship you there. O oh, Allah, we ask that they restore, that you restore Masjid al-Aqsa, that you mock this to the Ummah. O oh, Allah, we, we ask that you allow us to reach Ramadan so we can fast for your pleasure and that you forgive us and have mercy upon us and reward us with Jannah. Ameen. Ya Rabbi al-Alameen. اللهم احفنا في من هاديك وعافنا في من في من آديك وتولنا في من توليت وبارك لنا في ما أعطيت وقنا شر ما قديت إنك تقدي ولا يقضى عليك وإنه لا يدل من واليك ولا يئز من آديك تبرك ربنا وتعالي ربنا لا تزيد قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وحبنا من دونك رحمة إنك دلوها ربنا أفرض علينا صبرا وطبت أدمنا وانصرنا على الكوم الكافرين ربنا آتينا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا حبلنا من أزواجنا ذرياتنا قرة أهل أجل المتقين إيمان اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك من المجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك من المجيد سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين